Uh, before I start, I should say that I'm also a senior lecturer at the University of York part-time, um, which helps with certain things and doesn't with others. <laughs> Um, and just uh, to give you a warning as well, that obviously there will be human remains. It's quite difficult. Uh, pictures of human remains, it's quite difficult to represent the company without that. Um, so um, York Osteoarchaeology is, was founded in 2003 and is um, the largest independent osteoarchaeological company in Britain. Um, despite the name, which I deeply regret now, um, and we work all over Britain and also, although not very much in Scotland, as you can see, and also in Europe as well. Um, and our staff have um, a lot of qualifications. Um, most of my staff have PhDs um, and between three and 31 years of experience and also skills in archaeological excavation, outreach, anatomy, and so on. Um, we do um, cover all aspects, really, of the osteoarchaeological spectrum from um, pre-excavation consultancy um, uh, and consultancy during excavation. We excavate as well. We do human remains processing. Um, we analyze skeletons and um, cremated remains, disarticulated bones, and so on. Um, we obviously report and we publish as well. Um, and we um, uh, collaborate with our clients and other organizations uh, for future research as well. Um, uh, we, we undertake outreach um, work, we organize exhibitions, um, give talks and workshops, um, and also um, facilitate um, reburial or curation of human remains. Um, so with the consultancy, um, prior to and during excavation, um, we advise on our clients um, prior to excavation. Um, here you can see some of the the CIFA tent, uh, we didn't advise on the, doesn't seem to work, um, didn't advise on the tent, but um, we worked with um, sorry, C CFA in Manchester, um, and we were able to help a bit on site. We, we spent one day on site for the best part of nine months to um, help with um, advising on lighting and other aspects. Um, we also helped to develop um, very site-specific uh, strategies here um, is at Network Archaeology, we managed to really tighten up the sampling strategy in order to save both money and time. Um, so we tried to improve the sort of site-specific excavation and skeletal lifting as well, and develop um, the um, yeah develop the site strategies and um, help with excavation of often poorly preserve um, human remains or block lifted human remains as well. Um, we process human remains and that includes um, washing skeletons, um, excavating urns and processing um, cremated bone um, and sorting cremated bone as well. There's a nice example here of a gypsum coffin from York which we excavated. Um, obviously, we analyze skeletons, that's the, the main part of our job. And um, we analyze them for the standard aspects, including skeletal completeness and preservation, sex, age, uh, stature, and ancestry. And we look at um, skeletal pathology and dental pathology as well. And you can see we've developed a, a specific app um, to analyze the human remains. Um, both an app for the disarticulated human bones, which calculates the minimum number of individuals straight away, and also um, for the um, inhumed human remains. And we are just working on one for cremated uh, human remains as well. Um, we undertake contextual analysis. I think that's very important, including on the funerary ritual. All of us have excavated and are trained archaeologists as well as osteologists, and I feel that's vital, really. Um, and we also look into pyre technology, of course, um, for cremated human remains. Um, we try to write reports that are accessible to the clients. Um, that, that's very important to us and obviously cover the subject of um, demography and pe uh, paleopathology. But we also try to tie in the human remains with the wider archaeological context and look at the funerary ritual for that. Um, and we undertake comparative analysis with 
um, skeletal assemblages from the same period, same area, and so on, to try to look at the bigger picture. And of course, we try to collaborate also with our clients to try to disseminate the information, whether it's in research publications or whether it's in the form of exhibitions or talks and so on. Um, we are quite uniquely placed, I think. Um, uh, all of the staff have links with universities and other organizations. And as such, we can both um, uh, collaborate with our clients, collaborate with these um, uh, external organizations and also consult on different aspects such as ADNA analysis, the, the whole suite of isotope analyses, peptide analysis for sexing, and at York we've just developed a new method where we um, just dip the teeth in acid so it's completely non-destructive in order to um, sex individuals very rapidly. Um, we um, undertake Zoom's analysis with our colleagues and then of course also non-destructive um, approaches such as radiography, different types of microscopy such as SEM. Um, we're just developing the histology side as well at the University of York. And then we are also very heavily involved in the development on, of new techniques. Um, we are working with um, heliometabolomics at the moment, which is a big word and it's also, a, it's got a very wide approach. You can look at pollution, hormones, all sorts of aspects lots of aspects that we haven't been able to investigate with um, with um, conventional techniques or, or the sort of better known techniques. And we can advise our clients um, on, on all of these as well and what should be used or could be used. Um, we obviously collaborate with our clients on outreach as well. So um, we work on research projects with local communities and with other stakeholders as well. And we provide talks um, and, and workshops with schools and other members of the public. Um, as I mentioned, exhibitions um, in York, there are several exhibitions that we um, have contributed to. Um, we give con conference um, presentations. There's Paula Ponce, who is my colleague, who's um, here in the audience, um, talking about her research on Paget's disease. And we work, obviously, with, with the media as well. Um, and then we facilitate and help with the um, other aspects of the completion of the analysis of the human remains. We try to help with archiving human remains in museums or loan them to universities for research projects um, or dispose them in accessible places where um, they might be studied by other researchers um, and also um, help with um, reburial of human remains as well. And I just wanted to pick out two assemblages, talking to clients and colleagues here yesterday. Um, I, I, there were quite a few. I was almost undecided and wanted to add another one. But I just talked very briefly about two case studies um, that we've been involved with. One is the um, Lincoln Bypass, um, an 8th century cemetery, um, uh, which was excavated um, uh, with network archaeology and we um, helped on site there as well for about six months we were on site and I'd like to add that we don't turn up on site and tell people what to do we very much um, arrive on site and listen and um, work with um, our archaeological colleagues on site and only when we've been there a while try to uh, see what could be perhaps um, tightened up or made more efficient um, so um, for the Lincoln Bypass, we were on site and we analyzed the human remains. There were 755 um, Saxon skeletons as well as um, 50 from other periods. Um, so they were commercially analyzed and we found that a large proportion of the individuals were children and a lot of them had um, uh, rickets and scurvy. There was also quite a lot of trauma, including weapon trauma there. And there were some possible non-Caucasian individuals as well. Um, so, um, in collaboration with lots of different researchers and uh, universities and other institutions, we undertook um, some uh, further skeletal analysis, and that included vertebral measurements of skeletons in order to assess stress. Um, we took cranial measurements and um, used uh, forensic databases to assess ancestry. We also further investigated that um, using ADNA analysis and uh, dietary isotope analysis. Um, we're hoping we we'll eventually manage to do some strontium and oxygen isotope analysis as well. 
as well to further investigate that because there were some individuals um, there who were confirmed through DNA analysis to be um, non-European. Uh, um, we undertook sex analysis of the children, which um, has just opened so many avenues. We can see um, that um, boys often died at birth where you can't really um, uh, control or, or facilitate um, who will die and who will live, whereas the girls are dying in later childhood because they're the less favored gender. Um, and they're more dying in, in greater numbers. Um, uh, the diet was very interesting as well. We were looking at weaning. There was a lot of, there were a lot of seasonal sh uh, food shortages in this uh, period. And then we are also analyzing this, and Paula is doing this um, uh, with her students at U, um, uh, looking at childhood assess uh, stress assessment through radiography. We are looking at SEM to look at weapon trauma. And then we've also undertaken lots of literature reviews um, to look at um, the children uh, further. So we've got 20 research projects ongoing on this assemblage, and this is all ongoing. So I just thought I'd mention another project, which is completed um, uh, at Fuston, which is um, a rural churchyard near Blubber Houses in, in North Yorkshire. Um, it's uh, post-medieval. Um, and I was involved with the excavation there, and then we undertook um, the skeletal analysis, and we found that there were a lot of teenagers in this assemblage who were riddled with rickets, scurvy, and tuberculosis, not what you expect in rural North Yorkshire in the 19th century. And we then did ice, a dietary isotope analysis, and we found that they weren't eating meat, but everybody else was eating meat. And then we undertook some strontium and oxygen isotope analysis and found that these um, teenagers came from um, inner city London, from Lambeth and, and um, Southwark. And um, then we undertook some historical research with the community and found, um, with the local community who, who still live in, in Fuston, and found that these were pauper apprentices who were taken from the workhouses, forced, forced uh, taken from the workhouses in London and exported to North Yorkshire to the silk and flax mills there and uh, were forced to labor there 14, 16 hours a day and not surprisingly uh, were dying there. And the whole project, um, this was the most satisfying project I've ever been involved with, was so fantastic because the local community was involved with the excavation. No CS, CS cards needed in, in this case, luckily. Um, they were involved with the analysis of the human remains, and we had um, descendants of our named skeletons who were analyzing or helped to analyze their ancestor skeletons. We had this wonderful um, hanging, a patchwork hanging, which the local community created, and there's one patch for each skeleton. Um, we created exhibitions, gave talks, and so on, um, books, um, and uh, we then um, the local community did all the historical research under the supervision of a researcher and then at the funeral um, of the um, skeletons the excavator dug the graves um, uh, the local community baked um, Victorian funeral biscuits and handed them out the researchers were there everybody the, the descendants of the dead were there um, and the local choir wrote a song and sang it at the funeral about the skeleton. So um, that was the, the most satisfying uh, project I've been involved with, I think. Um, so um, I uh, just want to announce that we've just finally launched, after many issues, our new website um, this week. So um, if you are interested in any of the aspects we are working with, then please get in touch. And I'd obviously like to thank Fame very much for giving me this opportunity and our fantastic clients and my team as well. Thank you.